Hello everyone and welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today's j date <laughs> Today's date is July 3rd, 2015. My name is Lynn Marquardt and I'm your host. Happy day before Independence Day everyone and thanks for joining. We have some fun things to do and could it get any more busy behind me with my new quilt there. Um, finally got that done. Thank you for Chris to Chris Myers for doing the meandering quilting all over it. I love it. Anyway, I hope everyone has had a great week. As we know, Fibercast is all about spending 60 minutes together and doing thing, fun things with fiber or anything. And once again, you all have inspired me to get some things done. So here's what I have to share with you so far. I have my doll to share with you, the progress I made from the class last week. You can see my cold's a little better, so that's good. Actually, it's much better. And then I'm going to do one Dear Jane block, the RS10, RS1 Tennessee Valley. And then I'm going to go back to my scrap, make a scrappy border for my camping quilt, which I don't see any campers here. They are here. <laughs> so that's the plan. And once again, welcome. Grab a project, and it's amazing what we can get done in 60 minutes. So... This is what I've been working on, and she's almost, so she's dry fit. She can pull apart. This is the class I took with Catherine Walmsley last weekend, and we had fun. We were in a church in Worcester. It was a great spot. Someone from the doll club, Al, is a longtime member of the church, and he hooked us up. And we just had a great spot. There were, I think, 12 of us, 11 or 12 of us. And for two full days, we learned how to make this. And she's not done. She is made out of clay, wooden dowels, a stuffed head that's painted, stuffed and painted. And she's called Mary Lou Spring Flower, which I didn't quite get the connection. But in the we saw the real... So this is the model that we were following. And boy, is it fun to work with a pattern. Just like when you're quilting, it's nice when you have a pattern to follow. So that was really fun. As a new doll maker, it was fun to see. To, I learned a lot of things. But what I learned was when I was there that on the outside of this doll are actual pressed flowers, ferns and flowers all in the front. And she has an acorn top on her hat and she actually has leaves for hands and her legs and her her arms are supposed to be sticks so she really is supposed to be this sort of earthy flowery child and yet she looks a little clown like with the other adornments so that's where she got her start apparently the boots that she's wearing weren't supposed to be hers at first but Catherine had them on hand and thought they looked kind of funky on her. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit and I'm trying to get her to walk look like she's walking. We'll see if that stays true. I think I can I think I can make it work and one hand will be forward a little bit so of course I've been walking here trying to figure out which way your hands and your arms go as you walk <clears throat> so that's been fun and um, next step is to gesso her. So I'll be doing that tomorrow morning while it's still cool out. But I wanted to let everyone know that we're making progress. And we'll put her, I don't know where we'll put her. Hmm. Ah, we'll put her, bye-bye. <laughs> okay, so that's the doll. Let's get sewing. I'm making again Tennessee Valley RS1. And I cut out all of my pieces. And this is the bottom part. And by the way, this is one of the triangles. And I don't have my book. My book is down in the vineyard with Mom and Karen. Hi, if you're out there. And But my PC is here with the software on it. So I could just print out the instructions. So let's see. Or the paper piece. Oh, and I'm going to use this blue that's on the backing of my quilt behind me and just thought I'd, I had some extra and we'll just use this up. It's a very blue theme, a blue turquoise theme or as I like to call it a Tiffany blue theme 
because breaking news, my nephew has just gotten engaged. Literally on the beach. I saw it on Facebook before I dialed in. So it's literally probably less than an hour old, this news, and we're very excited. So congratulations to James and Caitlin. And the way that I know that is his sister was on the beach and she caught the whole thing on camera. <laughs> Modern technology. Okay, so same old, same old. You guys know I don't, I'm not a very careful paper piecer like Carol Doak's method, although I admire Carol Doak's method. And KB, you'll be glad to know I did cut things out. But I didn't do a very good job of cutting them out. Hmm. Let's just see how this goes. Remember when you're paper piecing to put your stitch length down. I have mine down to 1.8 right now. And the reason for that is to, it makes it easier to pull off your paper in the back when you're done. The stitch and the needle almost perforate the paper enough so that it pulls apart when you're ready for it. But don't paper piece if you really don't have much fabric because it is just takes a lot of fabric oh and you know what down number eight before I put down <sighs> this long piece here in the bottom shouldn't have gone down first so before I go any further I'm just gonna take that one seam off we want to keep that for the end to put it across all these little dangly pieces So I want to shout out to Maggie up in New Hampshire. Thank you for your email, Maggie. Last week I got it after the last um, after the after Fibercast, or actually I think you had watched on Saturday. But it's nice to know you're out there. I love to get all of your mails and hear how things are doing, going. I wish I had some news. Well, actually, yeah, I guess I'd already been to Sacramento last time we talked. Did you know that next Friday we'll either have a pre recorded Fibercast or I'll record from Charlotte, North Carolina? And knowing our luck with remote Fibercasts, I think I might do us all a favor and record a day ahead of time. <laughs> I put ourselves through that stress. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's off. And we will come back to that piece. So now I've got piece one, piece two, piece three. Don't do as I do, that's for sure. I'm going to re sew piece three. Cut 
this off. So I had intended to have the camper quilt further along so that I could show you maybe some sparklers or putting some uh, a fireworks up in the corner. But then, <coughs> excuse me, we did yard work today. And so I figured I better stick to that rather than coming inside. We keep. I wish I had a picture to show you what it was going to look like. This is like, what is this like? This is like the little stand that elephants stand on. So it's like a drum, and it's going to have some jagged edges, like Charlie Brown's shirt. Debbie is out there out on the West Coast. Thanks for the reminder that retreat is only nine months away. I can't wait. <laughs> That's when you know you have some fun. This is Debbie. Debbie comes from San Diego every year to be with us at the up in New Hampshire. So it's a treat. And she's the one who lives down the road from Eleanor Burns. And I want to say Eleanor Burns' shop is called the Quilt in a Day, but don't quote me on that. So, of course, every year she brings us a treat or a bag from the shop, or she makes us something like a pin cushion. It's very fun. And this year she'll have all sorts of tales to tell because her daughter is getting married. So that is very fun. And we are on the last one here. get our iron ready and then I'm going to check and see who's out there okay so there is piece one through seven now I'm going to put piece eight on let's clean this up oh, I can hear the birds out there up the seam of the very first one we sewed. Oh, who's out there? Hey, KB! Aw, oh, she says, hi, exciting news about the engagement. Love the Tiffany blue. Isn't it? We're going to have a wedding to go to. And on other breaking news, I hear it might be up in the Berkshires. Not this year, but next year. But I that's 
You didn't hear from me. So glad you guys are out there. Jean is on the Cape. She says hi. Hi, Jean. Oh, Sue. I hope you sent me pictures of your dear Jane. Oh, good. Sue Norton says, hi, Lynn. Happy 4th of July weekend. Yes. Isn't it a fun weekend? Three days. Didn't you love sleeping in today? Today, I have an echo. Today, today. It was so enjoyable. <clears throat> Here's a picture of the Dear Jane blocks I've been working on. I have 27 done so far. Also have the top to my current quilt done, but still need borders added. Way to go. So let's look at the Dear Jane blocks first. Love these. Look at you with your curves and your applique, and they're all labeled. Four whole blocks there. This week, I think you said. H7, Bennington Star. B7, World Series. B12, Starflower. And B11, Melissa's Cross. And then what else do we have here? We have a second one. Hopefully this is the one you've been working on for your friend, I think you said, right? Oh, stunning. Oh, love it. Oh, hello there, Izzy. Can everyone see that? Oh, that has such movement. Oh, that really came together so well. Thank you for sharing that, Sue. So well, you've been busy even though you've been to Branson and back. Heather on skates, thanks for subscribing. Mary, welcome. Sharon, one, two, three. Ruth, Gypsy's mom. Karen Doe, is that really your, your name, Karen? And Sherry Gardner and Delois, Deloise. James. So Maggie, that was the doll that I did. Maggie up in New Hampshire, who is making Halloween quilts for all of her grandkids. I hope they're coming along really well. She said she has a tutorial from Missouri Star, which is a great, great source. So welcome, everyone. Keep on sewing. Let me, keep, let me fix this. I hope everyone has cookout plans. Or if you don't, just maybe have some lemonade or iced tea right where you are and celebrate the 4th of July. I watched a TV show. When don't I watch TV? I always seem to have TV on in the background. Oh, who's that? Hey! Hi, Carrie. Carrie is watching us from Orchard, Old Orchard Beach up in Maine. Okay, so thanks for joining, Carrie. She says, I tried to send you a message on Fibercast. I'm watching from Old Orchard, working on my row by rows. M miss seeing you. Happy 4th. I miss seeing you, too. We'll have to get together soon. And, oh. Your message should go to, through because I got it twice. And I would love to see pictures of your row by rows. If you send it to me through Messenger, I can show it. Carrie is the one who does a lot of work down at the Dragonfly quilt shop here and has made some row by rows with dragonflies in them, I think. Oh, here we go. Oh, Lorna, hi. Love your grand illusion. Thank you. I still need to finish mine. Here's a picture of the quilt I just finished. I used linen fabric for my solid. Loved using linen, she says. Happy 4th to you and your family and the Fibercast family from Lorna. Well, very, very interesting. You have to tell me more. Tell us more. I love this. 
Okay, it's kind of like, can everyone see that? And the off-white is linen instead of muslin or printed cotton. And it's kind of like a sideways tumbler. I love that. Is that your design? I bet it is. Oh, and I love all the fabrics you have. Oh, love it. Thanks for sending that. And we are a Fibercast family, aren't we? All right. Okay, so this is ready now. What did you do in Fibercast tonight? Well, I took stitches out. <laughs> and I coughed. Yay, yay. Has anyone been watching the soccer? I was late to the party. A friend of mine out in on the West Coast has been watching it, and I've been watching her posts, Andy, and about the different soccer games. And the only one that I've seen so far was the last one, USA, when they beat Germany. And my goodness, I literally was glued to the TV from beginning to end. And I am really looking forward to watching the finals on Sunday. <clears throat> so if anyone doesn't know, the, the women's soccer final is Sunday. It starts at 7 p.m. Eastern. They're up in Vancouver, so it'll be 6 p.m. Central. And it is the finals U.S. against Japan, USA. So it should be a good game no matter what the outcome, especially because I believe four years ago Japan beat us. And we have not, the women have not won this World Cup in 16 years, so it's time. And now I'm just trimming up this piece so that we have something pretty to show for the last several minutes of ripping out. And this really isn't quite Tiffany blue, is it? It's not quite green enough. There's the base of our triangle. Okay, so that is there. Oh, I pulled this out. I was going to put this behind the doll. Okay, now I have two other pieces of the triangle. I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty basic, just straight stitches, but I thought that was, that was good. It's a holiday weekend after all. Oh, so there was some interest from folks to do a quilt where we all pick the same pattern. And selfishly, I have a proposal. Has anyone done the storm? Uh oh, I'm going to get this wrong, KB. Storm at sea pattern. The reason I ask is my sister Karen designed a quilt this week and it is based on the Storm at Sea pattern block. And I thought that might be kind of fun, but I'll do any pattern. So basically, after last week, we were talking about doing something together and a couple of you wrote in and said it might be fun to pick a pattern and then all of us do it in our own colors, and we see how it turns out. And it could be someone out there, one of your patterns, send that in. We could do that. Again, Storm at Sea was just 
one that came up this week that I've never done, and I know that they have, <clears throat> I don't know if we'd use it though, depending on the size, but AccuQuilt has the cutouts. So that might be fun. In fact, there's probably no time like the present to just make a decision. I was just thinking, why, why wait? And you know, before we know it, we're going to get into the fall Christmas gift season. People making Christmas gifts, all of us. And then, of course, the mystery quilt that happens in the fall. Um, oh, I just so no. Um, so maybe now is the time for anyone who wants to do summer sewing. Oh, that may not work. Well, just barely we did it. Ugh. Did I tell you I'm using three different wipes on this? I decided not to be a stickler. And I had the whites here, and they're close enough. They're actually whites with little, little prints on them. So this notion of linen, Lorna, I love this idea. I don't know if you're a rug hooker, but, or if I've mentioned that I am a rug hooker, and I am. And you can have different backings the, through which you pull the loops. Traditionally, it was burlap years ago and then it can be monk's cloth, it can be other wool, it can be anything that has woven. It can also be linen and linen is by far my favorite feel when it comes to pulling loops through. I love it. So if it's anything like that feel which is it's malleable but it's it's stiff enough um, I'm very interested in why you picked linen. I'm going to tell you, it is tough to break linen. <laughs> <coughs> Which is why for rug hooking you want it. Burlap disintegrates more quickly than does linen under the wear and tear. But if you take care of the rugs, they they last a long, long, long time. See, so we're making a candy cane, if you will. And there are actually more pieces here than I thought. Who's making some 4th of July cakes with strawberries and blueberries and whipped cream or better still vanilla ice cream? Nothing says the 4th of July like that. And a big watermelon. Mm. KB and Mom, I'll be thinking of you at the party tomorrow night. Sounds like it will be a yummy time. In fact, I also, when I was stalking Facebook, I saw that the picture of Ben catching a fish. So who knows, maybe you'll have fish tomorrow. Looked like bluefish though, right? Or I don't think it was a bass. Bring the mayonnaise. <laughs> okay. Oh, the dog ran away today. That was classic. I tell you, one of the best things we've ever done, anyone out there who 
who owns a traveling dog or a Labrador is a classic traveling dog. <laughs> L.L. Bean sells the collars where you can put your name and your phone number. <laughs> that thing has paid for itself more times than I can count. As soon as I see that, that Allie's gone, I go and I get my phone and I put it with me. Bob starts walking that way down the street. I usually start yelling and then when she still doesn't come back I usually get in the car and I drive that way but I always have this and then sure enough someone some good souls out there will read her caller and they see Allie and then they'll read her the phone number and they call me and it happened today she was literally two houses down there and she had gone down back we have a reservoir out back and she must have she'd been so good all day but we fed her and she must have thought, oh, it must be a nice time for a swim. And sure enough, she went down there and the person, the man who called me said that she was swimming and she couldn't find a way to get out because there are rocks and she does have bad hips. I think she would have gotten out, but still. We were lucky. So what did I, I guess that was the whole point of the story. She ran away, but we caught her. Thanks to that L.O. Bean caller. Okay, so let me give this a good iron, and then I'll show it, show you what we have. So there's one piece. In fact, I'll cut it out now. Okay, so there is the second piece, and that's going to go there. So now let's, we have time, we have plenty of time to do the second side. Oh, I'm liking it. It's a pretty color. Bob had an interesting thing happen to him yesterday. He was at, oh, you know, after all this, I've been doing it the wrong way. Instead of starting at the top, I'm supposed to start at the bottom. You know what? Let's try that. Back. So Bob was at a home inspection yesterday, and I guess it's a, it was a double double condo, so two sides of the building. And he and the home inspector were literally going from room to room, turning on the heat, making sure every baseboard was working. And they got through all of the rooms. They were at their very last room. And Bob flipped on the, the heat, and they heard a pop. And the inspector said, what is that? What was that? Oops. And... I have to do this over again. Poofed. Turns out the wiring had been jerry-rigged, if that's the right word, to go from one side of the unit to the other. Bottom line, they had a fire. They went downstairs. Bob walked over toward the, um, the fuse box or the breaker panel, and flames shot out. So they both ran out, called the fire department, it was, the building was saved, but there was some damage, of course, and needless to say, there's going to, that puts a little bit of a damper on the sale. Um, but we'll see what happens. 
And can you imagine if in the inspection they hadn't done that in every room? That would have happened after the sale. Ugh, you just can never be too sure on these older buildings. And I guess most of the wiring was good. It was just where they had done some home rigging of sort of um, ganging on wire in between the two condo parts. He was a little shaken up, shaken up though. Exciting day at his office. In fact, speak of the devil, I don't know if you can hear that. He just pulled in. Be interesting if we hear the dog bark. No band tonight. It's a holiday. Someday we'll have to have a guest appearance. Hello, honey. <laughs> So, Sue, it sounds like if we keep going on these Dear Janes, in a couple of years we will have them done. And then they will be masterpieces. Do you have a due date or any ideas when you might want to have it done? I don't really. I, I must admit, though, I thought to myself tonight that it was something that would feel good to complete even just a block at a time. And I think I have about, don't you think I have about as many squares as you do? Have you done any of these triangles or are you holding off until the very end? I started off being so methodical. I, I went, I think I did anyway, A1. <laughs> A2, and now I just go for whatever strikes my fancy. We've been seeing a lot of hummingbirds here. Mom, I did your sugar water. For anyone out there who makes their own hummingbird drink, it's just sugar and water. All these years I've been cooking it. I thought I had to heat it up, the water up, to dissolve the sugar. But it turns out that it's not that much sugar that I'm putting in. And cold water with the sugar, cold water dissolves the sugar well enough. And I put that into the hummingbird feeder, and boy, they love it. So thanks, Mom, for teaching me that. I do know they like clean feeders. The feeders get funky, then they don't seem to come around. And I have blue globe thistle out there. Biggest batch of it I've ever had, and I can't wait to see if that attracts them. Last piece is kind of interesting. And then we put two side pieces on and we're done. We're done with another Dear Jane triangle. Yay, that worked. I think these these blues are supposed to form V's, and hopefully they line up somewhat well. 
And I'm kind of hoping because we started at the bottom on one and at the top of the other, I'm either either they're going to nest beautifully or they're not. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. There is second one. All right. First we put those so we put those together. Then we'll put this on the bottom. Let me check though. This other piece. Yes, that will go on even after. So I have two long pieces here that will go on after. So this is fun. Oh, hello, nested seams. They did nest. So there's a trick. If you happen to have two symmetrical pieces like this, of course, this is probably the only other block like it, and the numbers are 1 through 8. 1 through 8. Oh, and you know what? They already knew that. So this one's 1 through 8, and this one starts up here 1 through 8. So follow, this is just another reminder, always follow the numbers. Because when you put them together, the seams nestle in there beautifully. I'm going to live on the edge and not even use a pin. Is the top and bottom. I think I'm going to take this off. See, it did scooch up about a sixteenth of an inch. Hmm. Okay, so now I put those two together. So there, now let's put the last two pieces on either side. And then we'll iron it. one, put the other one,
this off. I think we're going to have time to work on some camper quilt binding. Or border, I mean. Yay! Okay. So this is RS1 Tennessee Valley. So there's that. Let's put that over here with the doll which we'll bring out at the end. Okay, let's see in our last remaining minutes who's out there and if we can get started on some scraps for the camper quilt. <laughs> I told you, it's amazing when I get done because we do this every week. And I hope that you get, you enjoy this and get things done. Even if it's just a sit, you deserve it. Hmm, my phone keeps getting this carrier settings update. New settings are available. Would you like to update them now? No, not now. Sue, hi. Sue, she says, she says she doesn't have a due date for the Dear Jane quilt. I was curious. She's been only doing the center block so far, but I've been thinking about trying a triangle soon. I hope to have it finished before I retire. LOL, I like that. That's a good plan. <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of game we could play there. Oh, okay, linen. So here's the here's the scoop on the linen. She says, "I wish it was my design. I bought the fabric as a layer cake a year ago. Ooh, that's why it all goes together. That looks nice." Didn't know what to do with it. Bought this magazine that was for pre-cuts. And on the cover was this quilt with my layer cake fabric. And I said to myself, there you go. That's what you'll make. And as they say, the rest is history. That worked really well. And then as to the, to the linen, Lorna says, I was at my local quilt shop. And they had just gotten in a new line of linen. And I thought that it would be just a cool look. It really is. It looks so modern. I didn't have any problem with fraying, and it just sewed so beautifully. She says, I did not pre-wash my fabric. That's probably really smart. Can you imagine the ironing you would have had to do, I think, unless you caught it at right the right time, pulling it out? You probably, yeah, it's like linens that we put on our table. You'd have to iron it a little bit damp. and So anyway, a cool look. I like it all. Thanks for the information. That's cool. Hey, Patty, down in Texas. She says, sorry I'm late. That's okay. You're here. We're glad. She's at her daughter's house, kid-sitting her granddaughter. Ooh, how are her tonsils? I hope they're all better. Are you going to do a tumbler? I'm trying to fit. Well, I don't know. Oh, the Bonnie Hunter tumbler. I'm not. But I probably could be talked into it. Let me see what else you say here. It didn't look that exciting to me. The tumbler didn't. I'm trying to finish a friendship quilt and made good progress on my GIMQ. Cool. A quilt made together sounds fun, she says. Still quilting the bow tie quilt. Good to see you. How's your mom? Well, got to finish salads for tomorrow. Patty in PA. Patty in Texas, Patty in PA, yay, yay, yay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Well, the salads, I bet, are going to be yummy. Let's start from the back going forward. How's my mom? My mom is doing great, although I haven't seen her in a week. But all indications are a week ago today, she went for back to the doctor, and she did the whole chest x-ray and everything, and the, the, the surgeon saw her, and she... All of the other surgeons came in to look at her and see her as this remarkable case study. So she's, she's doing great. She's doing awesome. In fact, she's driving, and um, she's just doing great. So thanks for asking. And hi, Mom. That's for you. Mwah. Let's see. Quilting the bow tie quilt. That I can't wait to see again. I love that. And then... Quilt together sounds fun. Maybe we do the tumbler together. I don't know. I don't know. The lozenges, lozenges quilt, that looked really fun to me. 
And this, um, why don't we do this? If anyone has a strong opinion one way or the other, jot down names of patterns that you would get a kick out of doing and put them on the Facebook or Google or send me an email. And next week we'll see what kind of consensus we have, if any. And you know, actually, we could do one better. We could do a survey monkey. And we could ask a question. So here's what we'll do. Okay, everyone write in what patterns you think would be fun to do together. And so the idea is we pick one pattern and we all do it in our own colorways, in our own size, in our own methods, and we just compare it every week. And we could even decide, you know, we want to get so far in week one, so far in week two, so far in week three, so that maybe by the end of two months we would have a target to have it done. Anyway, we pick the pattern. Everyone send in your ideas for patterns. Next week we'll aggregate all those ideas and we'll put a survey monkey together. It's quick and easy and it's free. And then we can vote on it. And whichever one wins, we'll do. I think that would be fun. I said hi to Gypsy's mom and Karen Doe. I think that's it. Carrie, I'm so glad you're out there up in Maine. Awesome. So as a reminder, here is the camper quilt. Nothing has changed since you saw it last week. Last week we put this one, just this off-white scrappy border. Here, I'm going to stand up actually. <coughs> Excuse me. And now what I want to do is repeat some of these colors, the yellow, the teal, and the red, and create just a scrappy border all the way around, like I tend to do, all the way around, maybe five inches thick. I want it to be pretty wide. And then that might be it. And then maybe I can start to take this with me, although I... You know, I'm a big talker, but once I get on those airplanes, I don't tend to do a whole lot of hand work. But that would be a good one to take with me to do the embroidery of the different campsites that we haven't done yet, including fireworks up in the corner. So literally, what I do, and you've seen me do this before, I have these leftover pieces. So how, how big is this? Hmm. Three and a half by <clears throat> nine and a half. Eight and a half. That makes sense. It was eight and a half by eleven to begin with. Ah, we'll do it three and a half. And do I want to introduce green? No. The trees are green. I want those to stay inside. The only colors I want out here are red, yellow, and turquoise. Not quite sure why, but I think that that will keep us, keep our eye going in. That's what I want. I want people's eye to go all around the quilt and up and down, and then I'd like it there to be kind of layers of discovery. So people will look at the quilt once and maybe look at it again and see something different. And I'm going to do contrast. But something like that I think is too big and too patterny. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I don't want, I just want this to be color. I don't want it to be, unless it were a campfire or a hot dog or something that you would find in camping. I think I don't want to put it in there. And I could be overthinking this. Oh, someone's still out there. Hey, Maureen in Pennsylvania, hi. Oh, she says, I can't wait for the vote. Oh, excellent. Good. Can you believe we can do this? This is amazing. Good. 
Well, Maureen, and if you have any ideas of any patterns that you've seen that you've wondered how to do maybe, or it doesn't have to be hard or easy or whatever strikes people's fancy, that will be fun. Here we go. Yay! Can you imagine if we did this quilt, right? Imagine if someday we all met somewhere. That'd be a hoot. Sue Norton, it'll be when we're all retired, I'm sure. Ha! And we'll bring, <clears throat> bring these quilts. We'll bring, of course, all the other quilts we've worked on. And we'll all bring our dear Janes that are be finished. <laughs> I'm going to chain piece, so I have several pieces here. In fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll do all blue, and then I'll do all reds. I think that's a little little. <laughs> Getting so grown up. Ooh, that's an old one. But it's too pinky. Ooh, here's a good one. There we go. Am I doing white? No, I'm not even doing white. I'm going to take that back. Here we go. See, that's not enough contrast, though. Well, this could take a long time. Hmm. Am I doing off white? No, I don't think I am. Okay, so I'm changing my mind. Because I'm not going to use any off white in this particular border, I'm going to use the contrast of colors rather than values, light and dark. So I am going to mix up blues with oranges and yellows. We'll see how that goes. In fact, I'll do three of them and we'll see if we like it. Okay, a couple of yellows here. And an orange. Go back up here to the first one. Oh, I love getting back to just this. Oh, it's so different from earlier when I was trying to figure out where to place, where to drill the holes in the doll's feet. <laughs> Whereas this, there is no right or wrong. You're just so long. And you're so long. And I suspect this is where you may find me next week. Well, nope. If I pre-record, I'll pre-record earlier, maybe before the soccer game this Sunday or something. I'll figure something out. And I will either be doing more of this or I'll be somewhere in Charlotte. But either way, I hope you'll join me. And I thank you for joining me this, this go around.
it's always so fun to see everyone and have you join in. Again, just a reminder, we worked on our doll, so we're making progress there. We worked on Tennessee Valley RS1 for Dear Jane, and we made a little progress on our camping quilt. So thanks for joining me again. Really appreciate it. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Friday night on Fibercast, 8 p.m. Bye, everyone. Happy Fourth of July. <laughs>